All right, good morning, Schmida, and welcome back to another episode of True Crime Loser. How you doing? That's good. If you would like to support this show, if you enjoy it, then think about it. There's a working Patreon link in the description. I would really appreciate it. All right, so today, Georgie Hughley the Fifth. Yesterday, I made a mistake and was calling him the Third. Hmm. Actually, it's the Fifth. Hmm. So there's five of them. Great. So George Hughley the Fifth is um, in the hot seat. And the first thing notable with this interrogation is the detectives don't tell him why he's there. All they say is, George, hey, George, uh, George, you're here because we're investigating a case. You are being detained and you're not free to go. That's all he knows. So the reason they do that is because, and you'll see them in a, a lot of interrogations. They don't give up any information that they don't that they don't need to, and it's be, it's exactly because of a situation like this. And in other interrogations, you'll hear someone be like, "Well," they'll ask the detectives a question. Well, you know, was did was her shirt still on when you found her? And they're like, "We can't tell you that." And the reason is for this exact situation so if they would have come out and just said what did you do yardley's dead what are you doing then they wouldn't have gotten the full he just gives them the whole confession he puts himself at the scene he says they got into a fight he says that he took her computer and so it you know, you couldn't argue that, I don't know, we just got in a fight and then I left and then her computer's gone. Was she robbed? Did someone come? He gives them everything. They get the whole computer, even before he knows she's dead. So good job to the detectives because it's not easy. Like I always say, we always are pretty quick to criticize, you know, like what is that detective doing? Even though I'm about to criticize one of these detectives, but there's a lot of things that are thinking, okay, don't give all the information. Um, don't go too quick. Don't freak out so they quit talking. Don't get too, apply pressure, but don't apply too much pressure too early. Just a million things. And so these guys, these two did really well of just, you're here for a case, Georgie. Um, and then in George's mind, he's just like, like, you know, I probably just got in another fight. Like, you know, I'm so good at throwing a little ball in a net. It's going to, like, figure itself out. Like, it's all good. So they sit down. Um, after listening to the, the interrogation more last night, I don't know. I don't think he sounds like anywhere. Like I was saying, maybe he sounds... Um, and someone got real mad at me that I said he sounds like people in San Francisco. I didn't mean to say that. He, The reason I said that is at one point in the interrogation, he says that he wants to move to San Francisco, and I think that was just in my head. But he doesn't really sound... Like, even in Colorado, where I grew up, there's a bunch of, like, snowboard bros. Like, bro, like, ski or die, bro. Like, whoa, did you hit the the hill, bro? And he doesn't even really talk like them. So he just may talk like his own breed, just, uh, and so, all right, so he's in the hot seat, and I think the female detective does really well. I think she's on it, and I think the other detective, who I found out his name is Ed, Detective Ed, I think he does horrible. I feel like Ed has lines that he practiced, like Detective Ed, in his, in his house before the interrogation, like, combing his hair, practicing his big lines, like, you're not here to dance with us. He has all these weird lines, but the problem is he kept screwing them up in this one. Like, I think his big line that he wanted to use throughout this interrogation was, you're not here to dance with us, George. This is serious. So I picture Ed in his, in his house looking in the mirror like, you're not here to dance with us. 
like maybe has some music going in the background, like you're not here to dance with us. I'm Ed. Detective Ed is in the house. But he blows it. His big moment in the interrogation, he tries to use his big line a few times, and they he just they just flubs the line. So at one point, George is like, you know, after he figures out that she's dead, saying, "There's no way she's dead. He's not dead." And Ed just goes, "You're not here for any reason, George." And everyone is kind of just like, even the female detective is like, "What?" And then, like a little bit later, a little bit later, he'll he tried it again, and finally he gets it. It's like you're not here to dance with us, George. But like four times, he just tried his big line, like his big Quentin Tarantino, like you're not here to dance, buddy. But it just came out like you're not here to dance with us. And it's like when you're doing stand-up and just you try something and it's just not funny at all. You're not here with us, George. And even George. Ed was making George look pretty smart. Like at one point, Detective Ed was like, I think I know why you took the computer, George. And George is like, like, why did I take the computer? And Ed's like, because... There was an email on the computer, George, and you wanted that email to disappear, right, George? You're not here to be with us, George. And even George was like, you don't delete emails by taking one computer. They're just on the internet, and so you could look at them from any computer. It's like, that's the only time George looked smart in this interrogation when Ed was like... Detective Ed was like, is that why you took the computer, George? And George is like, no. And Ed is just like, all right. So Ed was comically bad, in my opinion. Almost to the point, it seemed like a comedy detective movie where they wrote one of the detectives like comically stupid, but it's not realistic. But Ed was just... Ed was having an off day, in my opinion. You're not here, George, because of a reason. Uh, Ed, that was incoherent. He's just like, all right. (laughs) Okay, so let's get into this. So they sit him down, and they do a really good job of just acting like no one's dead. So they're loud, you know, she's the female detective that does really well. She's reading him his rights, and they're acting. you got to be kind of a good actor to be an interrogator because she's, you know, chuckling and laughing because they're acting like, you know, it's all good. Let's just, you know, you're here for a case. We're just investigating a case, so let's just, (laughs) let's just talk. Let's just talk. And Ed's in the corner like, you're not here because we asked you to be here. And it's like, yeah, he is, George, or Ed. Ed's like, Okay, so Georgie's in the hot seat. We're here investigating a case. They're downplaying it, you know, let's laughing. Ha ha, no one's dead. All right, they start with, um, they start with, describe me your day tomorrow. And I talked about it yesterday, but George is like, so I went and, like, played golf. I I did, like, a father-son tournament with my dad. And, uh, like, I had, like, we, like, drank all day, and then I went to dinner, and, like, uh, like, uh, had, like, two wines at dinner, and then, like, went home, a couple beers, and he, so he describes, and he goes to the bar, and then, uh, he's, like, I went and had five more beers or something, he talks about drinking all day, and then he goes, and then I went and talked to Yardley. And as an interrogator, they didn't know if he was going to deny this. They didn't know what he was going to say when they said, what was your day tomorrow? All they were saying is, we're not going to divulge any information. And let's see what he says. So you got to think that at that moment where he's talking about, I just got hammered drunk and then went and saw Yardley. There had to be like, okay. All right, don't freak out, Ed. Don't use one of your lines right now, Ed. 
Just let him keep going. So he puts himself at the scene. That had to have been a little bit of a nice. He just put himself. It's one of the hardest things to do. So, and God, his story about getting to Yardley is just one for the books. So that he's, they're like, so the detective's like, so who's Yardley? And he's like, she's like my like, former girlfriend. And she, and the detect, the female detective is like, okay, keep going. And then so he's like, he's so like, I get there, and I'm like, Yardley, let's just talk. I just like wanted to talk, but like, Yardley was just like, oh, like she just like didn't want to talk. And she was already like freaking out about like, she was like freaking out already, just like I don't want to talk, just freaking out. And I was like, Yardley, let's talk. We got to talk about this. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is where he <clears throat> he really brings in... Um, what's his face? Georgie the Fifth. Ma. The, Georgie the Fifth. He really... His strategy is he just keeps referencing the week before when Yardley came in drunk and was like hitting him. Ah, you fucking... Die. Um... And so he's like, yeah, like, I just wanted to talk, but she was already freaking out about what happened last week, and, like, I was just like, let's talk, but she was like, ugh, like, ah, uh, like, so the real story, if you didn't miss, if, if you didn't, uh, catch the episode yesterday, so he describes that he got there and like knocked on the door and was like, let's just talk. And she was like, oh, I don't want to talk. So like that's the story. The real story is he got there, knocked on the door. She was like, go away, George. And he kicks the door down, shining style, just. And one thing that I had didn't talk about yesterday that I meant to is when everyone was describing like how good of a guy he was after he killed Yardley, you know, just like, we didn't see it coming. He's always been a good guy. They were like, he was even the vice president of Operation Smile. And I have no idea what Operation Smile is, but I just picture, I just picture uh, George just being like, hi, I'm George, and this is Operation Smile, and uh, I think I said that at the beginning, I don't know, either way, but, so he's just with Operation Smile, and he kicks this door down, but in his story, he's just like, uh, like, she was just like, ah, uh, freaking out, right, and, um, and you know they don't they don't press they're just like at this point the whole strategy is just like keep him talking just keep him talking and uh, so he's like yeah like i got over there and it's just like i was like yardly let's just talk i just wanted to talk to her but she was like oh like already freaking out about what happened last week so he's really trying to push the like she came over last week and was like punching me and I was like, go away, like you can't punch me. And so I just wanted to talk about what happened last week. It's just outrageous. I just wanted to talk about it. And um, it's just wild to hear his, his story. But he, the reason is so, he's just so open about it because in his head... This isn't, this isn't gonna, he thinks that he, it's just gonna be another like, yeah, like I'm the athlete, you know, I got in, I got in a fight, I'm a lacrosse player. That's what happens, I got into a fight. And, uh, and he, the whole time he's just sit, sitting there, and he's not nervous, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. The one and only Little T. T. Hey, Little T. 
anyway. And so they're just letting him talk through the story. And, you know, he's just, his main goal, like I said, is just last week she came in hitting me. Look, I'm not the only one that hits. And all I wanted to do was talk. Okay. I just wanted to talk about it. At one point, he even says, I was there just trying to make things better. And she was like, oh, like, I don't want to talk. And I just wanted to talk. All right, you guys get it. Um, yeah, so his, his story about the whole, like, oh, uh, she was just like, uh, and I wanted to talk, was is the most insane story of all time. And she also was like, she's like, once I got in, she was like, no, George, go away. And she started like hitting her head on the wall. And I was like, stop it, Yardley. And I grabbed her and I shook her. And I was like, stop hitting your head against the wall. And she was like, just hitting her like head. And it was just like, Yardley, stop. And, uh, and then he's like, and then at one point, I like, we like, were on the floor and we were talking. <laughs> And I was like, Yardley. And then she, like, her nose started bleeding. And I was like, let's just talk. And then the conversation was, like, going nowhere. And so, like, I just, like, threw her on the bed. And I was like, go to bed, like. And then I just left because I was like, I wanted to talk. And she didn't. And then, and so that's his. And they just are like, okay. They don't challenge that insane tale. They don't do anything. They switch gears. So he's just been referencing last week. So like because of last week, I was like, let's talk. And so then they were like, all right, what happened last week? Um, they let his story hang. And so again, that's good because if they were like, dude, none of that happened. You kick the door down like a drunk, blacked out psycho how scary would it be to have somebody kicking a door down slowly and steadily and you're just in the room like we go out on the like little comedy tours we drive all over the place and we stay at these motels in the middle of nowhere and i always think the scariest thing is to be at a motel in the middle of nowhere and to have somebody start slowly kicking down the door. And uh, poor Yardley, that must have been just this drunk, blacked out, sweaty, giant man just kicking the door down. But they're like, all right, what happened last week? And, and he does the, tells the whole story. I don't need to go into it too much, but it's like, they had normal college stuff where they're just they're coming to the end of the relationship. They're starting to bang other people. She banged some guy from another college. Texted him like I'm so which is messed up. Uh she texted him like I'm so glad I banged that other guy. And then he, she came back into town. They saw each other at the bar. He ignored her. And then she came over to his place and they got into a fight and like her friends had to pull her off. And it really does sound like there was some physical abuse from both of them. They just had one of those relationships. Still, it's, I mean, still George, he weighs like a hundred pounds more than her. So no excuse, George. Um, but he, that's his whole thing is like, look, like we have this like abuse, you know, uh, what happened last week is why like this happened. He's going off of that. And, um, okay. And then they let him ramble on about ha what happened last week. And that is in his eyes is, um, explaining his actions because he just needed to talk, Right. After last week, who wouldn't want to talk? He has to talk. And um, and then they were like, how did you get into her room? And he was like, I knocked. And I was like, Yardley. And uh, she heard me and let me in. And, uh, and they were like, are you sure? And he sits there. 
And he's like, actually, it might have been locked. And they were like, yeah, it was. And he's like, well, oh, like I may have like put a hole in it. And he, like, George is like, yeah, yeah, actually, I may have, like, kicked it, kicked a hole in it. And Ed is like, Ed does all right at this part. Ed is like, George, that is not, like, wanting to talk. That's just pure rage. And you guessed it. He was just like, yeah, but I just, like, wanted to talk to her. What's horrifying about Georgie boy is he really thinks that if you want it, just wanting to talk to someone means you get to. I wanted to talk. Therefore, I kicked the door down so I could get in because I wanted to talk. Like as if the detectives are going to be like, oh, he wanted to talk. Gotcha. All right. We thought, listen, George, we're sorry. We thought that we thought you'd kick the door in and murdered her just because you were mad and drunk. But we didn't we didn't know you wanted to talk. He wanted to talk, shut the cameras down. They just like that's pretty that goes back to like him never being told no in his life. I wanted to talk. I get if I want to talk I get to talk like you can't just not get what you want if you want to talk so I think that's what's scary about this dude is he's just he he has no concept of if someone doesn't want to talk to you and the door's locked you don't get to talk and if you kick the door down you got to go to jail because it's just insane okay so where are we at and uh, I, sw- I swear a line that George said while explaining to Ed that he just wanted to talk to her is he goes, I was there to just make things better. I wanted to talk. I was there to make things better. And then the female detectives takes back over and uh, saying... You know, after you wrestled with her on the bed and she had a bloody nose, did you go back and check on her or did you call 911? And he's just like, no, I didn't think she needed it. And I think, and they take a break at this point. So I think they're probably at this break talking about, um, like maybe he doesn't know she's dead, you know? and it's like okay because um, just the, his his body language and everything he's like relaxed the whole time which is nuts to me because everything that he admitted even if she wasn't dead if you kick the door down and wrestle with someone and give them a bloody nose and then admit to that that could be kidnapping and breaking and entering he got 23 years for the murder you could possibly get 20 years for just what he did if she didn't die. So I don't understand why he's sitting there just being like, yeah, like I just wanted to talk and then we were on the ground and I was just like shook her, like let's talk. And uh yeah, it's, I, I don't, he just, I think he just thought that he was just going to wiggle out of this one, just like everything else. It was just going to be like, I'll be back on the yacht in no time, and then I'll jump off, and then I'm going to throw a little ball into a net, and everyone's going to love me for that. I throw a ball into a net really well. And so, you know, I'm allowed to talk. And uh, But the problem is, this time he did he did something worse. He did something bad enough that no one really cares how well you throw a ball into a little net anymore Georgie and so they take a break then they come back and Deputy Ed has some weird moments where he's trying to talk about the laptop and um, and then really soon after that they tell him 
they tell him, George, she's dead. And for everyone that watched the, for everybody that watched it yesterday, then his reaction to that news is pretty interesting to watch. But I'm going to cut it off there. This one's getting a little long. Um, that's the show. I appreciate everybody that likes and subscribes and helps me out on Patreon so much. You guys really are the best. I love you all. True Crime Loser out. Why? Stive and why? Shmita.